What's going on, everybody? I'm Eric Hoyle at Eric Michael Hare, brand ambassador for Alpha Park Milano Professional. And today I'm gonna to be teaching my 35 foil or less high contrast balayage. Let's get started. All right, y'all, so we talked a little bit earlier and she's in college, so we wanna provide a good shelf life. That's why I think this express technique that I do is super awesome. It gives her exactly what she wants, but it also provides her the longevity that we're all looking for in our busy lives. So with that being said, we're gonna dive into our placement and I cannot wait to break everything down for y'all. Today, I'm gonna be using my absolute favorite lightener, the Alpha Park BB Bleach High Lift 9. I'm gonna start with 20 volume and then we'll work our way up to 30. That way everything lifts more evenly. Let's get into it. We're gonna start with our balayage technique. Typically what I like to do, I'm pretty organic when it comes to coloring hair. I, meaning this, I always like to color hair the way it lays. So my section is nothing too intricate. I just kind of like to set myself up for success. So we're gonna take her into four sections, right behind the ear, and then we're gonna mimic the exact same thing on the other side. So we eliminate the front space right now, and we're focusing on the back. I like to work smarter, not harder. I don't like to get overwhelmed in sectioning. And then we're gonna turn her to the back. And this is about as fancy of a section as I get. I take an upside down triangle on the back of the head. And what this does, this gives me my blueprint and then this allows me to see the exact backdrop that I wanna see to make my highlights here and here pop. So you can almost see as it's grown out that backdrop coming down, which provides me with a lot of contrast and dimension which to me is super important when we're doing these lived in techniques. And then I'm gonna split the head in half. So now we have basically five sections. So I'm gonna give y'all kind of a little aerial view. We got the back here, upside down triangle. We have our two subsections right here. And then I just eliminated everything in the front. And then once we get to the front, we'll talk about sectioning for that as well. So with that, let's get right into it. All right, so from here, I'm gonna take my first subsection. So I'm gonna have you turn here. I'm gonna be right by her ear and then I'm gonna go in a diagonal back. So basically I'm working my way up the head in a V pattern. So we're gonna take our first subsection right here. Now this is gonna be my focal point here and we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And look, these techniques, obviously hair density, hair length, all that plays a factor in things. So we always wanna be mindful of that. So from these two subsections, we're gonna start our placement. Down for me. Working my way in a V pattern, like I said earlier. Sometimes I will do a zigzag just to give it a little bit more organic of a feel. But if, you want, if you're more of a clean foil, we can always take slices and then we're gonna weave and tease off of that. So here, again, I always like to provide shelf life, but also I'm, I'm worried about the integrity of hair, which is why I love the BB Bleach Lightener. It has its own bonding system in it, which I think is awesome. So I'm gonna hold this hair out, elevated like this, and I always like to do a little shake. And those baby hairs that fall, these are letting me know I wanna see that grow. So I'm gonna pick those out. And again, this is an organic approach to hair color. So little tips like that, I think are pretty, pretty key and providing a good shelf life. So I'm gonna hold the hair out like so, good tension, and I'm gonna weave pretty textural weaves, eliminating space right there, and then I'm gonna hold my section out here, and this is a pretty good tip right here. I like to shake a little, and then you'll see those little hairs, short hairs coming up. That lets me know where I wanna start my tees. So here, we're right here. I'm gonna start tease here. And if you ever run into any friction, 
while teasing, if you're in a knot, place your comb here, push that up, and the rest will follow really smoothly. Guys, I always foil with a board, especially with these looks. I don't do a lot of foils, so I always wanna make sure the foils I'm putting in are providing a really nice impact. So then I'm gonna tease, finish teasing up my mess, and then I always take a clip, clip that up, and what that also provides, that provides me when I'm painting a barrier to where I'm not painting on the head. Whenever I'm painting, I always like to target my saturation on where I want my blend to begin. So it, with this look right here behind the ear, I want it to be pretty high up. So I'm gonna start here, but I'm always leaving myself room to blend up. So again, saturation is super, super key. Working my product in. And from there, I always, this is one of my favorite tricks. I always take a fine tooth comb and I'm always combing through my sections, making sure that I have nice, even saturation. That's super key. So that looked pretty saturated, but now when I comb that out, you see all these dark spots that appear. That's a letting me know that I need to have a little bit better saturation. So now I'm gonna go back in and just double check and keep myself honest, which I think is super, super important. However you see the hair in the foil before you close it, that's how it's gonna lift. So I'm pretty, pretty anal about making sure my saturation's key. And now we're gonna go up and break that line with nice fluid strokes, never stopping. Now we're gonna fold, make sure it's nice and incubated so we get a nice even lift. Now from this next subsection, I'm working in a V, but also I'm taking these slices and then what that's allowing me to do is that's allowing me to have veils of dimension. That way it's providing softness and a good grow out. So again, I'm gonna leave that little pocket out right here. And these little tips and tricks right here, this will always provide you really fluid, even blends. Leaving that little bit out right here, I don't ever like to have what I kind of call a cluster. So then we're, again, we're gonna take our weave here, super textural, and I usually I'll alternate it. So sometimes I'll do three, working my way up the head, I try to get a little bit wider and less uh, weaves. So again, holding it out, looking for where, where that hair is gonna tell me to start the tease. Teasing up. And again, clipping that tease up, giving me a, a barrier for when I'm painting. And look, whenever you see these kind of orangish hues from a grow out, whether that's the hair growing out or your root melt uh, coming down, one thing I, I, I was taught years ago and it really stuck with me, you can only do so much, you have to lift past orange. So whenever you see that warmth, I like warmth in the transition area because that'll provide me an anchor for my root melt to latch, latch onto. But other than that, whenever you see those orange hues, you really do need to lift past it. So I actually am gonna be targeting these areas right here. And you notice how whenever I'm painting up, my brush never stops. I think that's pretty important and that has always provided me a really nice seamless blend. And then we're gonna finish up on this last foil of this subsection right here. And again, look, we're left with this little triangle, but you know, I'm just gonna take one little angle right here, and then I'm gonna give this one a nice little tease. Cause this is almost gonna, almost visualize it as like through, while you're working up the head, we're creating veils to lay over the impactful foils that we're placing.
We're gonna close this foil up right here. So that's our first subsection right here. So we have one, two, three. Now we're gonna mimic that on the other side. 